Hello friends, this is Dr. Ranjit Singh once again with you. Today we will discuss the concept of Shakespearean comedy. You know William Shakespeare was an English poet, playwright and actor, widely regarded as the greatest writer in the English language and the world's greatest dramatist. He is often called England's national poet and the bard of Avon. His extant works including collaborations consist of some 39 plays, 154 sonnets and two long narrative poems and a few other verses. A collection of his plays was published in 1623, commonly referred to by modern scholars as the first folio. This folio contained 36 of his plays. In this folio, the plays of William Shakespeare were grouped into three categories, comedies, histories and tragedies. Here you can see the plays that were published in the first folio. Out of these 36 plays, 14 plays were grouped as comedies. You know that comedy is a dramatic composition of a light, amusing theme with fun, humor, often satire and happy ending. Basically, the comedies are of two kinds, the classical comedies and the romantic comedy. The classical comedy was invented by Aristophanes in Athens in 5th century BC and developed by Meander in Athens in 4th century BC. The Roman comic poet Plutus adapted the classical comedy in 3rd century BC. The first English comedy based on this Greek model of classical comedy was Ralph Royster Royster that was written around 1552 by Nicholas Eudel. The classical comedy follows the rules of dramatic composition as laid down by the ancient Greek and Roman masters. The more important of these rules are the observance of the three unities of time, place and action, the strict separation of the comic and the tragic and the light and serious elements, the realism in dealing with everyday familiar life of ordinary people, the corrective and satiric aim, some human folly, weakness or social vice is exposed and ridiculed in these comedies and these comedies they mirror the life of the times. Now the romantic comedies of Elizabethan era. The Shakespearean comedies are romantic in nature. So they are characterized as romantic comedies. These comedies grew out of national tastes and traditions. In these comedies, the dramatist does not care for any rules of literary creation. He writes according to his own will according to the dictates of his own fancy. The three unities are carelessly thrown to the winds. He does not care for them. There is a free mingling, mixing of the comic and the tragic elements. For Shakespeare realized that life is a mingled yarn of joys and sorrows. Life is a mixture of happy and sad moments. So it would be unnatural to separate them. The aim of these comedies is not corrective or satiric, but innocent and good-natured laughter. Follies, stupidities are no doubt exposed and ridiculed in these comedies, but the laughter is very gentle, very sympathetic. The dramatist sympathizes even when he laughs. While watching these plays, we laugh with the characters on the stage, not at the characters. Shakespeare's comedies have been grouped on the basis of the time period when they were composed. His early comedies are called boisterous comedies. Love's Labour Lost, The Comedy of Errors, The Gentleman of Verona and Midsummer Night's Dream. These are referred as his early comedies and immature and farcical comedies. They are full of wit 
and wordplay, puns and conceits and humor of it, coarse and cheap. Then the second group includes the Merchant of Venice, as you like it, much ado about nothing, and Twelfth Night. These comedies are called joyous or sunny comedies. Some critics have called them mature comedies as well. In these comedies, Shakespeare's comic genius comes to full flower. Love and music are their very essence, and the atmosphere is one of fun and merrymaking throughout. They are very rich in the comic spirit. Then in the third group, there is dark and somber comedies. Neither for neither, all spell that ends spell, and Troilus and Cressida. These are the important comedies of this group. In these comedies, the dramatist displays a keen desire to expose the falsity of romance and to show the shorted realities of life. Then comes the fourth group. In the fourth group, the lower comedies or the romantic romances are put. Single line, the winter's day, the tempest are the comedies written towards the end of Shakespeare's career. In these comedies, the playwright again comes back to comedy after writing his best tragedy. Now let's move to discuss a few important characteristics of Shakespearean comedies. The first important feature is that the setting of romantic comedies is romantic. The Shakespearean comedy is romantic not only in the sense that it does not observe the classical rules of dramatic composition, but also in the sense that it provides an escape from the hard realities of life. The action takes place in some distant, far off land and not in the familiar everyday England. The dramatist transports us through the wings of his imagination to the forest of Arden in As You Like It or to the shores of Illyria in Twelfth Night. They exist nowhere but in the imagination of the poet. Shakespeare. In the land of romance and enchantment, the inhabitants have no other business but that of love making. A Midsummer Night's Dream reaches the very height of romanticism owing to the presence of the fairies, bright, beautiful, idealized beings of Shakespeare's poetic fancy. Then the next feature is that there is confrontation of realism and romance. Indeed, the mingling of romance and realism is one of the salient features of the comedy of Shakespeare. His characters are ordinary human beings and incidents such as are possible in life. In Midsummer Night's Dream, the homely bottom and his companions are constant reminders of the reality of life. In Twelfth Night, the Malgolio episode and the wise comments of the fool serve the same purpose. The setting is poetic and romantic but it is skillfully related to real life. The settings of Shakespeare's plays are all imaginative in unknown lands like Arden, Illyria or Vanish. So, Shakespearean comedies are true to life. They are full of mirth in funeral and dirth in a marriage. Shakespeare's characters are real like ordinary human beings. The romantic main plot and the realistic subplot are harmoniously put together. Then there is the theme, the theme of love in all its variety in the comedies of William Shakespeare. A Shakespeare comedy is a story of love ending with the ringing of marriage bells. Not only are the hero and the heroine in love, but all the characters they are in love. And so in the end, there is not one marriage, but a number of marriages are solemnized. The entire atmosphere is surcharged with love. The lovers are all young people and they fall in love at first sight. In Midsummer Night's Dream, it can lead to Titania's infatuation for an ass. Or we also see 
the transforming effect of love this true and constant love which is not times full and which does not alter when alteration finds ennobles uplifts and inspires both the lover and the beloved in his comedy each tries to outshine the other and each seems to have greater strength now let's discuss about the characters in shakespeare's comedies actually it is said that shakespeare has only heroines not heroes in his comedies so heroines in shakespearean comedies play the leading role and they surpass their male counterparts that's why this comment is true shakespeare's heroines rosalind ocia viola beatrice etc are endowed with wit humanized common sense human feelings and noble qualities of head and heart they are exceptionally winning and charming they have also beautiful feelings thoughts and emotions they radiate joy peace and spirit of harmony they have all the gifts of inspiring and of returning affection so shakespeare's heroines are the sunlight of the plays now a very important feature of shakespeare's comedy is its disguise the use of this dramatic device disguise is common in most of the comedies of william shakespeare in the two gentlemen of verona julia disguised as a boy is employed by the man she loves and viola is employed by orsino in 12th night in merchant of venice jessica disguises herself in the lovely garments of a boy and portia and narisha likewise they come in the court in the masculine attire in much ado about nothing apart from the masked ball margaret poses as a hero and hero poses as her cousin in as you like it rosalind and celia they become gynamite and aliana they also change their dress and become boy in all spell and end spell helena passes herself off in bed as diana and in major for major mariana takes isabella's place so for women to disguise themselves as boys may have been suggested by the fact that there were no actresses no female characters on the elizabethan stage in disguise the boy actors could easily and naturally play female roles second the reason may be that the disguise enabled shakespeare to symbolize one of his favorite themes the contrast between appearance and reality Shakespeare's comedies are full of humor. So humor is the soul of Shakespearean comedies. It arouses thoughtful laughter. It is full of sympathetic, kindly, and human laughter. Shakespeare's comic characters like Falstaff and his fellow men illustrate the spirit of joy and jovility. He can laugh at human follies, faults, and failings, but such laughter. is by no means heartless careless or cynical shakespeare's comic genius is good natured and magnanimous then shakespeare's comedies are full of music and song in 12th night there is a very popular line music is the food of love so since music is the food of love shakespearean comedies are intensely full of music and songs Twelfth night opens with a note of music, which strikes the key note of the play. Several exquisite and romantic songs are scattered all over. Midsummer Night's Dream, Twelfth Night, As You Like It, Much Ado About Nothing are full of songs and music. Now let's look at the role of fool in Shakespeare's comedies. In Shakespearean comedies, this all-pervasive spirit of happiness. it comes much from the presence of the fool or some clownish characters there whom the dramatist introduces into his love tales bottom and his companions in midsummer night's dream the musical feast day sir and you sir toby in twelfth night and a touchstone in as you like it 
they all come readily to the mind of all leaders of Shakespeare whenever we read his plays. Besides contributing fun and humor to the related plays, they interlink the main plot and the subplots also. Sometimes the fool is not really a fool, but the wisest character of the play, as we have seen in Twelfth Night and As You Like It. In Shakespeare and comedies, we see the role of chance and fate also. All the complications and all the difficulties which beset the path of the hero and the heroine are unexpectedly removed. Things turn up by chance at the right moment and all ends well. As in the tragedies, so in the comedies, fate takes a hand in the human action. We can take the example of the merchant of Venice. It is by the intervention of this kindly goddess that all the ships of Antonio in the Merchant of Venice return home safe, just at the right moment. You can take the example of Twelfth Night, where Savashin arrives at the scene just in time to save Viola from a bloody duel. We know that the course of true love never runs smooth. The path of true lovers is beset with difficulties. Misunderstandings take place. Lovers have to face the hostilities of parents, friends or relatives. And consequently, there are much tears and sighs before the final union takes place. But all these complications and difficulties are unexpectedly removed by the benign power of fortune. In six print comedies, we see the blending of the comic and tragic elements. Six print comedy differs from the classical comedy in the sense that in it the comic and the tragic elements are mingled. However, the tragic note does not dominate and the play ends on a note of joy. For example, the merchant of Venice is pervaded by the tragic element from the signing of the bond to the end of the trial scene. Ultimately, the play ends happily as Antonio, whose life has been threatened by Shylock, feels happy at heart as his life has been saved. Now let's discuss about the skill in the plot construction of his comedies. We see that the heart of Shakespearean play lies in its characterization and not in its plot. For one time, the plots of his comedies are not original. They were not invented by him but borrowed indifferently from English and foreign sources. While in the great tragedies, action issues out of character and develops naturally without being forced or twisted. There is no such logical development of plot in the comedies. There is much that is superfluous, ridiculous, shapeless, grotesque and artificial in his comedies. Much is improbable, unconvincing and absurd. Too much dependence on chance and fortune is there. Deceits, disguise, mistaken identities and cross purposes are the stock devices there that have been used by the dramatist to maintain suspense and prolong the viewer's interest. But the absurdities of the plot are concealed by heightening the character's interest. Now, in the end, we can say the characters of Shakespeare comedy are kindly, light-hearted and humorous. They are lovable creatures who win our sympathies so that we share their joys, sorrows and wish them all success. The women especially are winning and charming. They dominate the action and are always in the front. Any array of glittering heroines, bright, beautiful and witty enlivens the world of comedy of Shakespeare. So this world of Shakespeare and comedy is a world made safe for women, a world in which a girl may be happy and come to full flowering. It is woman, woman all the time. She wins and puts the men in the right place. They are the sunlight of the place, obscured at times by clouds and storms of melancholy and misdoing, but never subdued or defeated. They are the spirits of happiness, 
from Cleopatra to Miranda, Shakespeare is equally at home. He has the whole range of femininity at his command. His young men may be fine and handsome, but when any real business has got to be done, it is always the women in his comedies who do it. Sixteen comedies neither preaches nor teaches. They only illuminates. Shakespeare has enriched our experiences of life through his comedies. So Shakespeare is a good observer of good and evil. He does not make any judgment and proposal and reform. His comedies exhibit his vision of life and the vision is to show virtue her own face and scorn her image. Hence Shakespeare's comedy has been loved in swine in every age and country. Its charm is as fresh as ever even today. Its sunny atmosphere, its spirit of kindliness, its humanity, etc. have all combined to endear it to all his readers. His comedies are not merely collections to mirth-provoking incidents, but they are the pictures of life in its summer aspects. In reality, it's sparkling and vivacious moods. So this was all about Shakespearean comedies. Thank you.